Gary Tompkins with Al Bernstein. We are back at the Club Taj Mahal here in Atlantic City. I don't know if that music is <laughs> pulsating through your television sets like it is through my lungs. But we come to the main event, Livingstone Bramble and Ricky Myers. These are two guys who know each other very well. They were sparring mates way back when Myers was an amateur in 1987. Bramble has been around for a long time. He is down now to what a lot of people would say, last hurrah, but he's ready. Virtually an institution in the lightweight and junior welterweight division. He was lightweight champion back in 1986 when he took care of slick boxing Tyrone Crawley. The power and the hand speed made it look like Bramble would have a long reign with the title that he had won from Ray Mancini. But he lost it the next time out to Edwin Rosario. Then we push ahead. We move to 1989. The NABF title is on the line. Bramble produced a shockingly easy KO win over Harold Brazier. Two losses followed this, but he would bounce back in an excellent performance to beat Roger Brown. But 1991 was a bad year. Three losses. This is one of them, a courageous effort against Obakar, a match that many thought he won. Now, three fights later, he is in what many believe is his last hurrah against Ricky Myers. And here's the other half of the matchup tonight, Ricky Myers. And Myers is a guy who really has bitten off a pretty good hunk in this fight. He feels Bramble has slowed by at least a step, and he feels he's catching him at the right time. Ricky Myers has had a roller coaster ride of a career that he hopes will straighten out with a straight line to a title shot. He won 10 of his first 12 by KO, like this one over Juan Rivera. But controversy has followed him lately, even in winning this one over Roland Cummings. He came back from adversity early to rock Cummings. But some thought that referee Arthur Mercanti stopped about too soon. Still, it was a KO win, his only KO victory since June of 1990. Then it was Carl Griffith who provided a stiff test in his last bout. The early rounds were difficult for Ricky, but he persevered to rally in the middle and later rounds. And he achieved a draw that left both sides unsatisfied. Tonight, a former champ comes calling. This is a career fight for Ricky Myers. That brings us then out to the keys to victory in this one. Well, for Myers, use what you've learned. He uh, was a sparring partner with Bramble a couple years ago. Maybe that gave him some clues. Move him back. You want Bramble to go backwards. You don't want, but you want to not be counterpunched when you do that to him. For Bramble, Bramble, the counterpunching vitally important. The body, very important for him to work the body against Ricky Myers. Some personal taste. Bramble comes in the Buffalo Soldier by Bob Marley, and it's Brian Adams for Ricky Meyer. Two generations, two different kind of people. So we'll see. And I'll tell you what, it's music you can feel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to your toes. <laughs> All right, let's get to it then. Main event, and here is Michael Buffer. Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated, in association with the undisputed, undefeated King of Beer, Budweiser, presents the featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Chairman Jerry Gormley, Board Members Gary Shaw and Richard Harrison, Deputy Commissioner Lawrence Wallace, three physicians at ringside, Chief Physician Dr. Frank B. Doggett, Dr. Howard Taylor and Dr. Dominic Coletta Jr. The timekeeper is Roosevelt Gilbert. Alternate referee Earl Morton counting for the knockdown seconds. The scoring will be done on a 10-point must system. The judges are Steve Weisfeld, Deborah Barnes, and Paul Venti. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Trump Taj Mahal here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Ten rounds of boxing. This is in the junior welterweight division. The referee for this contest is Frank Cappuccino. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the multicolored trunks, weighing 141 pounds. He's originally from St. Croix in the Virgin Islands, but now fighting out of Marshall Creek, Pennsylvania. His professional record, 34 victories, 22 by KO, against eight defeats, two draws. Ladies and gentlemen, he's the former lightweight champion of the world, Livingston, Rasai Bramble. 
his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the solid black trunks, weighing in at an even 141 pounds also, from Port Reading, New Jersey, his professional record, 18 victories, including 11 KOs, only two defeats, one draw, ladies and gentlemen, Ricky the Rock Fire! Good evening, gentlemen. You were both given the rules by the New Jersey Control Board. I want a good, clean, hard fight. Both his touch gloves. Both his touch gloves. Both his touch gloves. God bless you both. No nonsense from Frank Cappuccino as we look at Ricky Myers. And this is a big jump for Ricky Myers, I think. Very, very important match. Let's face it, when he has been against tough guys, he's had some problems. And he is with a tough guy tonight. Livingston Bramble, who let's says, go, go, I have no excuses in this fight. I'm ready to fight. Sure and he when he's ready, he's tough. Sure, he says that now. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, he is tough. And, and you know, the, the one nice thing about both these guys is they, they will give you a, a complete effort every second of every round. One thing you could never say about Livingston Bramble is that, you know, he looks a lot like old what's-his-name. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is true. <laughs> He's really one of the good guys in boxing. Oh, yes. I know we say that a lot, but he, early on, he had this reputation of being this really tough guy who used to do terrible things to, to pit bulls and all sorts of things. He's not like that at all. It all stemmed from the first Mancini fight when I mean, I was around that, Bob. I, I did, did that fight. Yeah, we, I did too. We, we must have done it on separate Bobby networks Dark. or something. Where are you sitting? <laughs> no, I was just going to. You did the second one. I did the first one. Well, anyway, we did a lot of We worked that up among us, folks. But the thing is, remember around those fights, he was difficult. And, and there he was a good uppercut on the inside by Bramble. He was, he did create a lot of that for himself, but in reality, that really wasn't his personality. Not at all. He really is. How come we didn't guys. know each other then? Where know. were we? I kept waiting for you to come over and introduce yourself. <laughs> Ricky Myers coming out of this bout more like the old Ricky Myers that we used to see on the inside, whacking on the inside, using his power inside. And still jabbing his way in. And Bramble coming out bone dry, really. So he did not do a lot of work prior to coming out here. No, he really is very dry. And it looks like there is a cut which is obscured from our vision now over the right eye of Ricky Myers. That would be a shame. Oh, yeah. And they're bashing heads on the inside. That's the one thing you really would hate to see in this box. That has been a problem for Ricky Myers, too. See, you know what Myers is doing very nicely in this match? Using, finally getting to the point where he is using both styles. A little boxing skill, more boxing skills, but also the aggressiveness that they want from him. Well, you, you said it just a minute ago, but they both come in bobbing their heads, and there's a real danger of a headbutt in this fight. There's Bramble. Now, of course, Myers is pulling his head into him. But he has that problem. Well, Bramble really coming with that head first. Frank Cappuccino's going to really have to be aware of that. Nice combinations by Myers. But remember, this often happens. Bramble will let you do your thing, and the Mancini fight, a perfect example, let you do your thing, do your thing, until he finally gets to you. Bramble used to be a better defensive fighter. Still a good defensive fighter, but not as good as he used to be. He was almost impossible to hit when he get in that shell. Well, we asked Myers very frankly this morning, why'd you take this fight? And he said, I feel that Bramble is slow to step, and it's a good win. It's a win over a name opponent. Now all he has to do is go out and do it. End of the first round, and a good first round for Ricky Myers, but the cut. We'll be back. We start the second round, a little work in the corner of Ricky Myers on that cut. It seems to be uh, the bleeding stop. There wasn't a lot of bleeding from it in any case. No, in fact, it looked like it might have just been an old cut because he has had cut problems in the past. Let's uh, go back and listen in to Eddie Mustafa Muhammad between rounds in the corner of Ricky Myers. This recorded just a moment ago. Get jam a little more. All right? I need to jam some more. Let's go to work. Over time to jam. All right? Hands up and work to the body some more. When you're inside, just go right to the body. All right? That's all we got to do. Keep that jab pumping. He don't expect the jab. Yeah. Oh, he, he's that lost was the corner the of Ricky Myers between the first and second rounds, and the voice you're hearing is that of his trainer, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. Good corner work. You only accentuate one or two things. In this case, it was the jab and the body work, and you drive the point home. 
Myers, well, interesting. Bramble having a little better round than we thought in the first round. But Myers still a uh, slight edge. And he, Eddie is right. The jab is when he jabs his way in. Myers is much more effective. Bramble looking to counter with the uppercut here. See, in the second he stopped round. jabbing. And, Br and Bramble hurt him with the hook. You've got to, Bramble didn't used to be a guy that was vulnerable to be hit with the jab, but now he's being hit with it more. Very nice four punch combination, uh, but a good counter right by Myers. This is what we expected, isn't it? This kind of action, both men going right after each other. And in the midst of it all, a clash of heads too. Good body work by Myers. Well, style-wise, this is what you expected, really. And it's, it's quite interesting. And it's going to boil down, possibly, to power. Who, which man hits harder? Which man takes a punch better? Both men certainly have been hurt and knocked out before. We saw Ricky Myers get knocked out by for Fernando Sanchez. Now, that was with an uppercut, and Bramble has an excellent uppercut, and he's tried to use it early in this bout. Both got there. And the other wild card here is, will Bramble switch to the southpaw stance a lot, and will that upset Myers at all? Not on the inside, it shouldn't, and they're fighting most of this battle on the inside. One thing Myers has not done, though, is what Eddie Mustafa wanted with that jab. Myers laying on him a little bit more, I'm sure, than Eddie Mustafa Muhammad would want. Myers has only thrown 11 jabs, punch profile informs me, in this round. And of course, if you're in this position, you're not going to be able to throw many jabs. There was an uppercut by Myers that got there, and there was another clash of heads. That last right hand See, was short. And let me tell you, Ricky Myers will avoid those clashes of heads if he jabs his way in instead of bullying his way in. Wow. Good action. Punch combination from Myers and a left hand from Bramble in return. Excellent second round for both men. Ricky Myers not moving in behind the jab, they clash heads, but here's the combinations, and one of the things that has been surprising so far, Myers' hand speed, a little better than Bramble's right now. Yeah, good second round from Ricky Myers. Through the first two rounds, now Myers with a slight edge. Good second round, because remember, Bramble had a little edge after the first round. Yeah, Ricky Myers, uh, and you can see how close this is in terms of numbers. Graham landing only 23% of his jabs, and I'm reminded that that was normally a staple of his attack in the old days, and that punch not being used so much. What would I do without all these ringside mavens like uh, you and Logan Hobson and Bob Kenobi to remind me of the important points I need to make? Mavens all. <laughs> Who could be surrounded by more boxing knowledge? Is, is it a flock of mavens? <laughs> yes, a flock. Come on. And this is my scorecard. Me, Al Bernstein. I think <laughs> Myers won the first two rounds by a very, very narrow margin. And you, I wouldn't be shocked to see both those go for Bramble or for those to be split. Stay up his neck. Bramble is a different fighter now than he was. And Frank Cappuccino talking to Ricky Myers about pushing down on, on Bramble's neck. And I'll tell you, that normally works to his own detriment because when Myers does that is when he gets hit with the head. Bramble's coming in with that head. Myers is going to have to stop it with the jab. That's why Eddie Mustafa Muhammad is saying that. Because as, as well as Myers is doing on the inside, see, he can't, coming in that way is going to be a problem for him. Because he could suffer another cut. That's a body work by Myers on the inside. Coming up with the right hand. Well, you know, I'm going to go into my Ricky Myers rap, and that is, they're all bad cuts. See, the cut over the right eye of Myers is, see, he can't pull in like that. He's got to jab his way in. But now he's just going for a knockout yeah, because of the cut. I think he is, too. He's and just saying, i got to get him out of there. Wow, good, good uppercut. That's what Myers is vulnerable to. And I think Myers got stuck. I think he got more than he gave in that exchange. Ricky Myers is better as a brawler than he is as a boxer, but what they want from him is incorporate the boxing skills. See, right there is the jab. No, you've got to jab your way in, and that's what Amy Mustafa Muhammad will yell at Myers for, but it helps Bramble. And I think Myers is at that point where he feels this fight is not going to go too far. They're not going to let it go too far. Frank Cappuccino took a long look at the cut just a moment ago, and it's pretty nasty right now. And right now, Bramble is using that head as a weapon. And now he switches to lefty Bramble for the first time in the bout. And gets hit with a huge uppercut by Myers. The biggest concern that Ricky Myers has, though, is the cut. And he's fighting a pretty crafty guy. 
who can work on the cut. Speaking of working on the cut, they'll have to do that between rounds. We'll be back. He's and we are backing in the corner of Ricky Myers and between rounds while we were away, Frank Cappuccino there, right? came over and said it was Rick, not a headbutt. Need a jab pump. You got it, all right? And Eddie Mustafa Mohammed, Mohammed complaining one. loudly. Double and triple jab. That he has been right. using his head, and that may be true, but whether or not that, not that caused the cut. I want them hands up. Sit and punch to the body, that's all. Frank like Cappuccino conferring with the doctor here at ringside. Eddie Mustafa Mohammed again with the jab. He said, you've got to use the jab. And I'm telling you right now, that could make all the difference from Ricky Meyer's standpoint. Because if he continues to rush in with his head, he will, he may, that cut may open up just from a clash of heads. There's also a swelling around the cut, so it isn't only the cut. He's got some problems that he's going to have to deal with. Bramble doing a little bit more in round three. But again, I think the story of the fight right now is the cut. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad is on headsets with us right now. And Eddie, first of all, the big question is the cut. And do you feel any sense of urgency with your man right now? Well, as far as the sense of urgency, the cut was in, in, incurred by, by a butt of heads. And I just went over and to explain to the ref what happened. But uh, as far as our urgency, as far as uh, Ricky's in trouble, no, no. Ricky's in great shape. And we, we didn't really come on. But he did. The referee did come into the corner and say it was not caused by head. But I, I don't know what fight he's watching. I mean, the guy was putting this 100 miles an hour. Now, now you told uh, him to use the jab. And part of the thing is, if he jabs like that, like he's doing right now, he won't get butted again, will he? Exactly, exactly. Well, that's, that's the he can't idea of using the jab. Head. Exactly. Once you do that, we can keep him on. See, he's not expecting Ricky to come out with a jab. But, uh, hey, Ricky's, in my opinion, Ricky's doing great, and he's going to do some more great things. So we, we got a punch called the Nola Ryan, which uh, you, there it is right there, which you'll see what's going on. All right, thank All you. Right. We, we got it going on. Thank you much, Eddie. Oh, you know. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad talking with us. And uh, we've talked about Eddie, but he's a young trainer in the, yeah. this business. And great former doing champion. A good job. It's great to talk to them in the uh, corner. And innovation started here on ESPN by our producer, Ken Dennis, and the, uh, John Wildhead and others here at ESPN, and I think it's a good idea. Dave, you want to plug? Digging to the body well is Myers, and that cut has just now started to open up again, but good work in the corner by Eddie Aliano, who's been around this game for about 150 years. He's a young 150. Yeah, he is. That's, it doesn't look a day over 135. It, you know, and now, now yeah. is a cut <laughs> Sorry. over Bramble's eye. <laughs> We've been doing this too long together. Now, who knows where that came from, but even if it did come from a clash of heads, then it's poetic justice. Well, now this is going to come down to attrition here. They're going 10 rounds, and I don't know if there's too many takers right now on the over. Both men doing good work on the inside. I'm not sure that Bramble's cut may not be every bit as bad as Myers. There's the uppercut from Bramble. For him, that's the key to this bout. If he can get that uppercut in, he's got a great shot here. And he is working on it overtime. You can feel he knows. Now he feels urgency to maybe get, the, get Myers out of there. An action fight, and oh. it's an action fight that may be caused in part by the urgency, and I'll use that word again, on both men. We'll be back. Well, I'll tell you what, there's Livingstone Bramble's cut. One doctor looked at that. Another doctor was in this corner looking at Myers. They had two doctors in the ring. Hey, what happens if they both stop it at the same time? Who wins? There's a first, huh? <laughs> It looks as though Bramble's cut, and I just judged from looking at that replay that we have there, is alongside the eye, whereas Myers is above the eye. In the fourth round, Bramble really stayed busy and very effective in that You round. know, it's going to be very... Uh, uh, of course, it's all perception, isn't it? Our punch profile people are counting each specific punch. The judges aren't a big problem in boxing as far as I'm concerned, but that's for another day. But the fact is... It's perception, isn't it? And you know, Bramble, he's landing a lot of shots, but Meyer's very aggressive. Some of his punches are flashier from a little farther out. Who knows? Oh, nice hook by Bramble. And another. See, he knows, Bramble knows now. It, it's the uppercut. He has to do everything he can to ultimately set up uppercut. He probably knew that coming in. When we talk about Eddie Mustafa Muhammad in the corner of Ricky Myers, uh, Bramble himself has a pretty good brain trust in his corner. Jenks Morton oh, is yeah. going around with some of the best. Absolutely. Sugar Ray Leonard among them. And... Now, Ricky Myers landing on the inside, but, but Eddie Mustafa Muhammad has been giving him the blueprint to potential victory. He's not using it that much. Jabbing his way in. 
He was really dominating Bramble in the first couple rounds with the jab and has really abandoned that punch to a great extent. See, instead of coming in like that, granted he landed the good hook, he needs to jab his way in Myers, and then he can land those hooks and everything behind him. Right there. Gets the lead right in, and but pays for it. Here too. This has been a war. Oh. Everything that we really thought it would be. Two men who know their careers to a great extent are on the line. Myers, not quite so much at the age of 25, but almost as important for him to win as it is for Bramble. Good body shot with a right hand by Bramble. And a right hand set up with a jab. Well, you're right, Al. He is looking to that uppercut. Wants, there it is. He wants that punch badly. He knows it's the punch that can hurt Myers. He knows it's the one that he's most vulnerable And to. that cut on Myers is very serious right now. And Bramble is having a very nice round for himself here again. And it's not because Myers isn't boxing well. But I'll tell you, Ricky Myers will look back at this one and know that he, he hurt himself badly by not setting up all his other punches with that jab. And, and he's getting the right advice from his corner. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad is telling him the right thing. And, and some of it may come down to experience. Bramble finding a way to do what works for him a little bit better than Myers is. Even though Myers is, is probably boxing as well as we've seen it. Myers gets Bramble on the ropes and gets on the attack with Bramble. And there's a pro. Turns him around and is on the offense himself. Experience might be the difference right now in this bout. Now we're going to listen in on Jenks Morton as he speaks with Livingstone Bramble. Hey, you can't. You got to stop giving him the last, the last 30 seconds of the round. You're giving it to him. Pick it up every time. Right? Oh, yeah. Pick it up every time. There you see that cut is Don't alongside the eye, unlike jab. Myers. Keep throwing your jab. Your jab, and you know he's going to lead to your right hand. Well, it's alongside and above. You're closing a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, not quite as badly placed. Exactly. You're doing good. You're doing good. Your jab gonna keep you out. Of, uh, keep you out of everything. Okay. Keep that jab right. going. Nice jab. They are saying much Inside what Myers is saying. You can stay away from butts if you use the jab. Well, Jack Morton talking about the jab doing the job. Here in round four is where maybe Bramble's cut came from. Well, there might have been it. The forearm, if you will, or elbow of. Myers hitting him, and right after that is when the bleeding started. In the last round, Myers landed two of 24 jabs, Bramble 11 of 20. It could easily turn on that punch in this spot, because the other punches are working for both these men. Myers has been able to throw good hooks, good body shots, good uppercuts, good overhand rights. But it's when the jab works for either man that it makes it more effective. Big round for Bramble. And our crack crew and videotape coming up with that replay saying that is, in fact, where the cut occurred because he started bleeding right after that. So, uh, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad believes it was a butt that caused the cut over Ricky Myers' eye. We have proof that it was an elbow that caused the cut on Bramble's eye. And they would go to the cards here now. And that's what the story would be. Although, in the case of Myers, they've already said it wasn't a headbutt. Yeah, so actually, they, and I don't even know if they're acknowledging the Brambles came from uh, anything other than a punch. But I see Bramble coming right in with his head. Myers has been has done it also. Now there, you see the jab. I, I, you know, I, I'm a, look at look at that jab by Myers. Look at how it keeps him in a, in a good position. And same is true of Bramble. They're saying the same thing. And it's not that you can't follow in behind that jab and then rip your body shots and your head shots. But you've got to start with the jab first. And it's something that Mustafa, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad has worked so hard with Ricky Myers on. See there, go, coming in that way is how he's going to get another butt. Clash of heads right there. And again, they don't quite clash, but they lean on each other. And Bramble has abandoned his jab in this round. They wanted it from him. Got there with a hook, and I think he got Myers' attention with that, and then comes in head first. Well, see, there's the veteran. He did what he wanted to from the outside, and now he says, well, let me see what I can do with this head on the inside. Experience a big factor here. Look at both men have excellent jabs. Look at those, both by Myers, when they use them. It's a mental lapse when they forget to use that punch, because neither is getting the jab blocked very much. Well, this is a very, very, very entertaining match. Yeah, it really is. Vicious fight. And a lot of good things in terms of technique and form happening in there, even though it's an in inside kind of a fight. 
And both men came really ready. Again, the jab by Brambles. And again, a lot of blood from the eye of Ricky Myers. And Bramble, for that matter, yep. now. by Myers. This is a closer round than we've had in the last several rounds. Come to the end of the sixth round, and as you said, a tough round to score. We'll be back. These two men butting ahead so much. Look at this. Wow. But Bramble gets lower, doesn't he? And Ricky Myers looks at the official. But guess what? Ricky Myers made that happen as much as Bramble. No excuse for him to come in there like a goat. He should be jabbing his way in. And that's what Eddie Mustafa Muhammad has, has been telling him. In the last round, very close round. Now, I ended up making this round even. And as we end up looking at the numbers, I feel justified. is using the jab a little bit more in the last couple of rounds. Yeah, he's getting in a little bit, so is Bramble for that matter. It's not a characteristic style for Myers. I'm sure he has to keep talking Well, himself. but see, but you know, both his trainers, Kevin Rooney before and Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, even though they taught him a slightly different style, both emphasized the jab. See, look at work your way in with the jab like he did right there. And he has a good jab. He doesn't have a good jab, Barry, if he's moving around the ring and trying to be a, a pretty boxer. But he has a good jab when he's coming forward. One point fight for Bramble, so needless to say, the fight is there to be had. That's on your card. Now, Bramble, for his part, has abandoned his jab and let Myers take control a little bit with that punch. Bramble, early in this round, has abandoned punching. Yeah, that's true. Forget the jab. Both these men have been involved in a lot of close and controversial decisions. Myers, some think getting the benefit of the doubt in his draw with Carl Griffith, his win over Ray Oliveira, um, those two specifically jump into, uh, into my mind. And Bramble certainly has been involved in many, many close decisions. Some he's won, some he's lost. He lost to Ovacar in a match he thought he could have won. Had him down. He thought he did win that fight. This is a round in which Ricky Myers has fought very intelligently. A nice left hook by Myers. Bramble now switches to lefty. That didn't work too well for him the last time he tried that ploy. You know, we talked about Bramble's fights with Mancini, and this, the, this in microcosm is, is like that. Yeah, and this was the, this was the, the, switching to lefty was the thing that won him that match against Mancini. Myers, though he got hit with the right hook, is dealing with that southpaw style much better. Boy, what an action fight. Good right by Myers. This has been a good round for Ricky Myers, even though Bramble... To be an extremely close fight. Good work on the inside from Ricky Myers. Throwing the left hook after he misses with the uppercut. Both men doing a great job on the inside. Myers coming right out again and doing it. Oh, he said it at the outset, and you really had to know based upon the styles and the importance of this match that this would have been entertaining. And the only thing that could have ruined it was a cut that would have stopped the fight. Both men were cut, but it hasn't uh, stopped the bout so no, far. In fact, neither man's cut is appreciably worse than it was three or four rounds ago, five rounds ago. Here are the numbers through seven rounds, and you can see how close a fight this is. Yeah, they've thrown exact same number of punches. Is that remarkable? And uh, more landed by Bramble. But again, when you're talking 40 punches over six rounds, not that big a difference. And how you space those rounds uh, has a big impact on what the scoring ends up being. And that is in excess of 80 punches a round, too. And there's no soft shots being thrown. No, they're throwing a lot of very hard punches. Bramble's completely abandoned his jab. His jab has, like, gone south on him. Myers, at least, he's using that punch a little bit. Again, Bramble's just looking for the uppercut again. He hasn't even been looking for that punch so much in the last couple of rounds. Maybe Bramble's tired. Doesn't appear to be, but he doesn't, doesn't seem to be as active either. Myers pushing him off. You can feel the confidence building in Ricky Myers, though. He, he is not being counterpunched by all oh, big nice. rides. 
said, here it comes, and then brought it. You know, the left-handed style for Bramble has not worked out well against Myers. I think he might do better to go back to his conventional stance. Myers moving the right way against the lefty. Now Bramble goes back to the right-handed stance. Now you feel like Ricky Myers is making this bout the way he wants to make it. I think you said it. His confidence has really surged, and you could see it. And for, for Bramble right now, he needs to put some combinations together. There it is. He also needs to get back to what will work for him, which is jab your way in, then look for the uppercut. It's been a long and winding road for Livingstone Bramble, hasn't it, over really his has. career? Many, many tough matches, lots of wins, some losses, and it's led him right to here against this young 25-year-old who's also fighting for uh, survival in the boxing game. The uppercut of Myers. Myers doing more in the last couple of rounds. And he missed the uppercut, did Bramble. Bramble trying to steal rounds at the end. Now, earlier he wasn't, he was letting him, Myers take it. Into Ricky like Myers. Give me some more jab. Corner. I like that, baby. Give me the one. And Eddie Mustafa <laughs> Muhammad with a recurring theme. I like that jab. I like said. that, baby. I like what I see. <laughs> nice round, Chad. I like that. Nice round. Okay. Keep that jab pumping, Chad. Keep that jab pumping. He's okay, Doc. And Eddie Mustafa Muhammad helping out the doctors. He must be a medical man, too. I think he is. That's right. Next week, we go to Missoula, Montana. We'll be at the University of Montana where Todd Foster will entertain the home folks or near home folks from Great Falls by fighting Kelsey Banks. Foster uh, has a coming, a little bit of coming back to do. After losing uh, in a match to a former sparring partner, here is Ricky Myers winding up, and yes, it still lands amazingly. Was that the Nolan Ryan that? Uh, yeah, that Eddie must, that must be it. That wouldn't have landed to the head of Livingstone Bramble uh, three years ago, don't you think? Yeah, I don't think. And if Nolan Ryan threw it, it'd be a buck. <laughs> this is true. Maybe they need to rethink the name of that punch. Nine jabs thrown by Bramble in round eight, and of course. Myers was very active with the jab, which only goes back to the theme that whoever wins the battle of the jab could be the one that wins this bout. Still a close round. Interesting. I gave that round to Myers, so they, I, I wasn't completely in sync with punch profile. Well, again, Bramble trying to rally at the end of the round. I, I'd say a good 10 of those punches were in the last 30 seconds. And a lot of body shots. Of course, they count just as much then, but still, it seemed to me that Myers had done enough to win the round. Caught on the gloves, that looping right hand. I'll tell you, the, le hit him. the left hand, it's, I'm sorry, Barry, the left handed stance is not working for Bramble. He really should go back to the conventional style. Myers is able to throw the hook enough to offset that. And on your card, now it is Myers, a point in front, having won the last two rounds. Very close. We are, we are definitely headed toward a split decision, majority decision, or whatever. Something very, very close. It's yeah. gonna be, and it will leave everybody, uh, I'm sure, with an argument one way or the other. Unless something really dramatic happens in this bout. The uppercut by Bramble, which he has not been able to throw. Good right by Myers, but Bramble not moved by that punch. And in fact, got a right-hand counterpunch of his own in that pushed Myers off of him. See there, even though Myers didn't land those jabs, they helped set up those other punches. Remember, there's no secrets between these two. They worked together for a few years. And of course, that was when Myers was a little younger, but still. And it was when Bramble was younger, too. So in each case, it, it's made a difference here. There's Bramble slipping those punches. He has not been slipping as effectively. And normally, Bramble keeps his hands much higher than he has tonight. His hands have been very, very low. That was the uppercut, but it was partially picked. This is a different Livingstone Bramble, both in style and in terms of what he's able to do in the ring. 
not a shot fighter by any stretch of the imagination. He's done some very nice things here, but certainly not quite what he was, which is understandable. And this is a very close ninth round. As most have been. He counter right on the inside by Bramble, and boy, his counter punching has not been as effective as he would have liked. Ken Bramble trying to rally at the end of the round. The question, of course, is, is it enough? Good uppercut. Doing what he should have done more of. Excellent jab right on that cut of Ricky Myers. And both cut men have done a great job of keeping their men in the bottom. Could this be the most pivotal round in the career of both these men? I think it probably could be, and I think it certainly could decide the outcome of this one. And I thought it was interesting listening to Eddie Mustafa Muhammad in the corner of Ricky Myers. He turned that time from trainer to cheerleader. Yeah. Really trying to get his guy pumped up. Said, put an exclamation point on it here. Boy, look at that. The same yeah. number of punches again. And, you know, Bramble's got an edge here. And, uh, and is that does that translate into an edge in rounds, though? Could he have won a round? For instance, one round, we know he won by, like, about 18 punches. Well, that eats into that, that, that margin totally. So Myers could have won six other rounds by five punches. This you is know? one of those fights. You know, we always talk about where judges sit oftentimes has oh, yeah. a bearing on, their, on the outcome of a fight. And you can really see that in this fight. You can see that happening. This is such a close bout now. You, can, you can't argue with much scoring either way. The reason I didn't Mustafa became a cheerleader, and there you see my scoring, and believe me, I had to agonize over a couple of those rounds, so it could easily be the other way, and it would not be inappropriate. That is unofficial scoring. The reason he became a cheerleader is he had done his job technically, and the last round especially, Myers had been boxing the way he wanted him to box. Now the bottom line is he's trying to tell him, you just got to dig down. And he's just barking at him now, his Myers, saying, come on, come on. You know, the other thing that Myers is doing that harkens me back to Ray Leonard and Marvin Hagler, good right hand by Myers. At the end of every round, he's throwing oh. his hands up. Yeah, to try and get the edge. Good combination. Wow. That hurt Bramble, I think. There is no quit, no dog, nothing in either of these boxes that you would want to disparage. Nothing. I can remember this one for fight of the year. Oh, yeah. These are two excellent, excellent... Well-conditioned boxes. Good uppercut by Bramble. That's what he wants to get done, and it's coming late in the bob. Myers doing some gamesmanship. It's a very close round, and you're right. He's doing it. That's a PR move. Absolutely. No question about it. Although, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, I just heard say, don't do that, Ricky. Well, he doesn't want him to get hit while he's doing it. Myers landed a good right hand a moment ago. Uh, I'll tell you, oh, there's, there's the uppercut. The uppercut. But it doesn't move Myers, does it? Uh, what, a, what an outstanding effort by these men. Interesting that we should choose tonight to run a piece on matchmakers, isn't it? And Ron Katz certainly has to feel proud of what he's done. This is one of those ones where you put them together, and barring a, an unforeseen situation, this is what we expected. Really, it's a, a remarkable effort by both men. we got another one of those coming up, Kevin Pompey and Buck Smith. Oh, man, that's going to be just like this one. And Myers thinking, I won this one. And then Bramble shakes his head, uh-uh. Oh, man. Well, like you said, you can make a case for either man. Great fight. I don't care how it goes. Great fight. There is no question but that Ricky Myers feels he's won. That's Stan Hoffman. A lot of respect between these two men. Has to be. Has to be. Neither will have or has had a tougher fight. Now, and, and we have seen both of them in very tough fights. And if this man, Livingstone Bramble, should lose, and we're not saying he is losing, and he's trying to work up a little uh, support from the populace. This is the season for it. If, in fact, Ricky Myers here wins this bout, Livingstone Bramble has nothing to be ashamed of, and nobody can say he's an old man that couldn't fight. He may be at a point where he might want to be thinking about uh, stepping out of boxing. He certainly would be close to it, but it would not be on a downer. Look at the total numbers. Well, you can see, it's, it's just a very, very close fight. I believe I had Myers winning it by one point, and we'll see what the judges say. All right, we're going to find out right now with Michael Buffer. Mike. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Deborah Barnes scores the belt, 97-93. Steve Weisfeld scores it, 97-94. And Paul Bendy has it, 96-94 for the winner by unanimous decision, Ricky the Pretty consistent with what you had, which I think in the end wound up a three-point difference. Ricky Myers beats Livingston Bramble. Back to talk with him after this. Overman and Tom East come along to tell you all about the baseball game up in Toronto. Some managerial decisions in baseball, a little football news too with the New York Giants. And we go up to the center of the ring very quickly now. Al Bernstein with the winner. A not bowed and not beaten Ricky Myers. Al. I'll tell you what, he is jubilant with his trainer, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. He said, when you got, did the jab, you did it. That jab was the key tonight when you used it. Was it. it was on. I got a good jab. I've always had a lack of confidence. That's what it was. Eddie Mustafa brings it out. He brings out the best in Ricky Myers. I've had three or four professional trainers since I turned back in 88, and I learned a lot with every one of them. John Davenport, I learned with Boney Edmonds a lot when I was in the amateurs. I, I learned right, with we, we're Kevin have... Rooney, and now Eddie. Eddie brings out the best all right, of all. Congratulations. Good win for uh, Ricky Meyer. Let's go down to Barry Tompkins at ringside. All right, and it was a confident Ricky Myers, especially after about the last six rounds. Who says boxing is not a team sport? For Al Bernstein, my teammate, I'm Barry Tompkins. See you next week.